I've never seen a politician that wanted to torpedo his own city and his own constituents just to spite them. Holy cow. <laughs> Even by the extremely low standards that I set for Mayor Reed, that's one of the worst things I've ever seen a politician do. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Mayor Reed is a garbage human being. I know technically this is not news, but it doesn't make it any less true. And to prove my point, here we go. This is actually an older story from August 17th, but I got sick and, and this story was just too, like, it, it grinded on me way too much to not talk about it. And it bothers me that not more people did talk about it when it was actually happening because, I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen a local official say anything like this. This is one of the most astounding things that I've ever heard of. So to put this story into context before we actually dive into the meat of it, Mayor Reed was pushing really hard for an anti-discrimination law. Now, what this actually should have been called is the Bake My Cake Bigot Law. Because we all know the cases that have been happening over the past several years where like a gay couple will come into a bakery and the person is a Christian and they say, hey, uh, bake me a wedding cake celebrating me, uh, me and my gay lover's pretend wedding. And the Christian's like, yeah, that's against my religion. I'm not doing that. And even though the Supreme Court case actually found in favor of the baker in that case, and that is being litigated out more than once, and, and they're actually probably going to wind up going back to the Supreme Court with the same guy. Without getting into all that history, despite all of that happening, Mayor Reed decided it was time for him to push for a law that would say to that Christian baker here in the city of Montgomery, uh, no, you have to bake their cake. Doesn't matter that you disagree with it. Doesn't matter that you would be lending your artistic talent. Well, if that's the case, you just need to shut down your cake shop. And I'm sorry, that's just the way that it is. That is because Mayor Reed has always cared more about pleasing the people at the DNC than he has the people of Montgomery. This has always been his MO. I've done countless segments on this. If you want to go through all the reasons why it's a terrible idea, you can go through any of them. I'll send them to you if you can't find them. But the irony in all of this, for this city particularly, because every time I've talked about the story, it's always been on the national level because we haven't had a local story do this. This is Mayor Reed trying to enact an anti-discrimination law, which is the Bake My Cake Bigot Law, on the city of Montgomery. And I don't know if it would actually cause something like this to happen. I don't know if there's going to be some lesbian couple that walks into a Christian bakery somewhere here in town like Ligers, I think, is actually, and demand that they bake them a wedding cake. I, I don't know if that would happen, but if it did, this anti-discrimination law would say, yes, that Christian has to make that cake regardless of how they feel about it. And if that is the case, the irony here is the people that it would affect most, just based on my study, is black people. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this. This is a survey that was actually done. It was a, a Pew Research did it back in 2019, so pretty recently. And what it did was it just polled what people thought about gay marriage and whether or not they approved of it based on race. <coughs> Excuse me. Still having some problems here. Um, but if you look at that, in the 2019 version of the survey, you'll see white people approved of it 62%. And Hispanic people approved of it 58%, but only 51% of black people approved of it. So barely over half approved of same-sex marriage. And by the way, that's just asking about the marriage question. It's not saying whether homosexuality is morally right or wrong. I actually couldn't find the numbers on that one, unfortunately. But that's a pretty good indicator because I, I don't imagine that the numbers would be radically different. And this has been true, you can see in that chart there, that it goes back a long time. Historically, black Americans have always been the most hesitant to accept homosexuality as a moral good. And the reason is because they tend to be more religious than their white or Hispanic counterparts. And by the way, that's a compliment. In that sense, I wish white people tended to be more like black people because, like Paul, I want all people to be Christians. 
like God, I want all men to come to repentance and to have a relationship with him. That's my goal. And so the black community does a better job of that, and because of that, they're more hesitant to accept sinful things. Remember, Montgomery is a 70% black city. And so if there are people that wouldn't be affected by this, whether it's in the baking industry, the florist industry, uh, people that are ministers or that run wedding venues or, you know, any number of other things, you know who's probably going to be getting that business? Probably white people. You know, the, the few white people that are left in Montgomery, it's going to go to them or it's going to go to people outside the city of Montgomery. The people that would be hurt by this the most, the people that would likely be prosecuted, it's not going to be white people. It's going to mostly be black people. I'm not saying white people wouldn't be involved with it too, because they probably would be. But you're going to see an awful lot of black people that would be affected by this law and, and be either forced to comply against their will or refuse to comply and then have a lawsuit against them. You might be thinking, all right, well, sounds like Mayor Reed is a garbage human being for trying to force Christians to do things that they don't want to do or violates their religion. Well, that is correct, but that's not actually what I was talking about. What I was actually talking about is Mayor Reed's reaction when the bill failed. So what happened is this whole thing came up to a big debate, a, a, a big fever pitch, and it was going to be put on the agenda for the meeting to be passed, and it got voted down by one vote. So Mayor Reed's bill did not pass the city council. So, yeah, good. It's a victory for us, right? Yeah, absolutely. Didn't want the thing to pass. I think we really dodged a bullet in this community by doing so. However, the way that Mayor Reed reacted to it is one of the most stunning things I've ever seen from a local elected official. So let's go ahead and read that right now. This is from the Montgomery Advertiser. Reed said the two-month-long process leading to the vote showed that he was wrong to tell businesses how far the, the city has come. If the vote failed, he said, he would be forced to tell businesses that value diversity and inclusiveness that, quote, maybe this isn't the right place for that project because I can't stand behind it. Maybe this isn't the place for what your employees are looking for because I can't in good faith, uh, I can't tell you in good faith that this city shares your values and your vision. He also threatened to give Birmingham Mayor Randall Woodfin's cell phone number to those businesses. Birmingham's council passed a similar ordinance in 2017. Quote, they've learned from their mistakes, Reed said. That is one of the most childish things I've ever seen from an adult po uh, politician. And remember, I make a living making fun of politicians. It's my job to point out when they're doing something stupid or childish. And I don't think even I have seen something this stupid and childish from a politician, at least not a local one, you know, maybe from AOC, but I want you to think about this. This guy is literally saying, well, if you don't pass the law that I put forward, I'm just going to tell businesses not to even come here anymore. I am going to go out of my way to try to economically harm my city and present less economic opportunity for people within my city because I'm mad that the vote didn't go my way. That's worse than I'm going to take my ball and just go home. That's getting into, I don't like that you guys are playing the game that I don't like in a way that I don't like. So I'm just going to burn down the entire gym so no one can ever play again. I mean, that's the kind of scorched earth tactics that Reed is trying to go here. First of all, he's trying to bully people into doing what he wants. He's just folding his arms and saying, nope, nope. If you don't vote for it, then I'm going to try to drive businesses out of Montgomery and send them to Birmingham just because you're not doing things the way I want them to do. What is wrong with you, dude? Seriously, I've never seen a politician that wanted to torpedo his own city and his own constituents just to spite them. Holy cow. Even by the extremely low standards that I set for Mayor Reed, that's one of the worst things I've ever seen a politician do. I mean, it really is just absolutely stunning how he could do something this. I mean, first of all, politically idiotic. But second, like, you don't even want to support the city that you're the mayor of because you don't like the way a vote went on a completely unrelated topic? 
all right then this is the guy that has such big political aspirations and i don't know maybe that kind of attitude works in the dnc but I hope people, I don't think they will because voters have very short memories, but I would, I would like to think that somebody would remember that come election day that the guy was willing to uh, basically point the gun at, its, at the city's head and say, well, if you don't do things the way I want, then I'm just going to do everything I can to stop you. From... <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. I've... As somebody that, that does this for a living, you tend to have certain responses or certain like trains of thought that guide you in a certain way when an event happens. This is unprecedented. I don't think I've ever seen a politician do something like this. And because of that, I don't really have a, a great like way to think about it. It took me a while to process this, even though this story, you know, happened a few weeks ago. Um, I will say this. I would have at least admired his conviction and his courage if he had resigned. Like, I still would have thought he was dead wrong. Still would have thought that this was a horrible bill that was going to cause people to have to choose between losing their business or violating their religion. I mean, that that's pretty horrible just on its surface. But I, I expect that out of Reed because, you know, he's an authoritarian leftist. That's just who the man is. And so on that, eh, he didn't really surprise me. I, I kind of saw that one coming. But what's so astounding about this one is I would have at least thought that Reed had some sincerity, like some courage of his convictions if he had said, you know what, this was the bill I really wanted and uh, this city is just not as progressive as I thought it was. I think you guys are kind of a bunch of backwards rubes that, um, you know, even though the city, the city council and the, the city itself is incredibly diverse. Um, actually, it's not even really diverse. It's just majority of people that are typically considered a minority. <laughs> But nonetheless, I mean, uh, he, he could have just come out and been like, you know what? The city really isn't what it thought I thought it was. It doesn't share my value, so I'm going to resign. I think it's better for the city. I think it's better for y'all. Um, and uh, I just, I don't want to be a part of this city anymore. Y'all suck. I'm out of here. Like, at least that shows some courage. It, it shows that he's willing to sacrifice something for his ideals. This is do it my way or I'm going to pitch a fit and make life as miserable for you as possible. And there are probably politicians that take that stance and do that anyway, but at least they have the good sense not to tell people they're going to do it. Nonetheless, here we are with Mayor Reed doing this. But I think that that really goes back to the nature of what authoritarianism is. Remember that authoritarians are authoritarians. In other words, they want a big, strong, powerful government that can make you make decisions that affect your everyday life, whether you want them to or not, specifically because they don't believe they can convince people. You see, if they believe they could convince people, then they wouldn't be authoritarians. Because then they would just go, oh, I'll just convince people of it, and then I won't have to worry about it anymore. But Mayor Reed is such an authoritarian. He is so dialed into that idea that government should be making all your decisions for you or forcing you to make moral choices, or at least things that he sees as moral. That he basically says, no, I know my ideas aren't going to convince people, so I'm just going to jam it down your throat and you're going to like it or, you know, go somewhere else. See, but then when he doesn't get his way, all of a sudden he pitches a hissy fit. But that's where we stand right now. And really that comes down to Reed just cannot stomach the idea of somebody making a decision that he wouldn't make. He doesn't like the idea that there are people out there that believe differently than him or behave differently than him. And the irony is, while trying to pass a bill that he would say is all about love and tolerance, he shows that he has neither love nor tolerance. That he is so adamantly against anybody living in a way that he wouldn't deem as, as what he would want, that he's willing to try to make your life miserable to force you to comply with his version of morality. I mean, that's the ultimate intolerance. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others.
This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat. 